Hey guys, these are your AQA Chemistry Paper D predictions. Now you have to remember that I am not an examiner. I do not know exactly what is going to come up on the exam. I'm just a teacher that spent a lot of time doing a lot of research and this is what I've come up with. So please revise absolutely everything. Hopefully you know by now how much work, how much effort I've been putting into making resources for you to help you with this. So there's the whole topic video for you to go through and in conjunction with that there is the checklist the quick five questions and the seven, eight, nine hardest questions in the topic for you to do after this. But I've been thinking, I've been reading, and this is what I think is going to be this year's exam. So we know that 15% of your GCSE is about practical. And whereas paper one was very, very maths heavy with the topics, paper two is very, very practical heavy with the topics. Rates is something that comes up basically every other year. And this is in this topic. And we can combine a lot of maths into the rates, so drawing graphs, working out the gradients from the graphs, working out the rate of reaction. There are lots of different practicals, lots of different questions they could ask about this. Chromatography is another practical that used to come up on a regular, regular basis. So you have to remember to revise all of the practicals really, really thoroughly. We know that 20% of your qualification is going to be maths, and we know that paper one had all of the maths topics in it. So we can expect some maths in here, but maybe not as much as I was in paper one. We know that this one's, what well, I think this one's gonna be a very, very practical heavy compared to being very, very maths heavy, but we still can expect some maths in there. So like I said, it might be tied in with practicals, might be tied in with um, like working out RF values for your chromatography, might be tied in with working out gradients for your rates of reaction, or it might be tied in with working out something to do with errors in the practical, uncertainties in the practical, um, being given something, looking at it, asking it to read off and working out how much it has changed. It could also be something completely random because they can take any part of the math specification and apply it to any part of the science specification, which is why we see a few weird things coming up. So you could be asked to work out surface area or volume of something or a percentage in some way, you might not expect it. Just because they put the maths in slightly weird place don't let it freak you out there are a few things that have moved so moved either from separate science down into everyone having to know it, stuff like Le Chatelier's principle and equilibrium this can be quite a tricky concept um, and other things that have moved down from a level down to the GCSE are some of the practicals like melting points um, melting point determination to see whether it's pure or not. So these are things that they might ask you questions on because they've moved. There are a couple of new things like life cycle assessments, but for the most part they've taken things and made them much, much bigger topics. So like humans, environmental impact, um, carbon in the atmosphere is now much, much bigger than it used to be. Water is now much, much bigger than it used to be. And atmosphere and evolution are now much, much bigger than they used to be in a chemistry context. So it's worth learning those bits really, really well. There are a few things that are really, really common that really, really come up like every other year, two or three years. So it's worth learning these as standard answers. Things like fractional distillation and um, combustion, they could combine some maths in with these. So fractional distillation, you've got the um, points down the side for combustion. It could be balancing equations, something like that. Or another thing that comes up loads and loads is testing for things. So testing for gases um, and lots of other things. So combined science people, this is where we say goodbye. Um, don't forget, I've done so much stuff to help you with the whole top videos, the checklists, the quick fire questions, the grade seven, eight, nine questions. Um, please go and look at those afterwards. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. People that are still here, separate science. There is a lot of separate science in there. Organics. I love organics. I know some of you hate organics, but organic chemistry is a massive, massive topic. And while combined science people didn't have to learn very much of it, you guys have to learn loads and loads of it. So I think it could be quite big just because it's something 
something that is extra and special just for you guys. So you really need to know your test things, how to draw things, how to name things, as well as your like alkanes and alkenes. You really need to know your alcohols, your carboxylics and your esters. These are important because these are somewhere that they could throw in some really, really nasty questions. A few things that have come down from A level are much more to do with um, DNA, much more to do with amino acids, monomers and polymers. Again, this could be some slightly nasty questions because um, you really, really have to think carefully about what is going on. The scope of these is absolutely massive. And then a few other things that have come down, there's rusting, and then another standard that comes up over and over and over again is, like I said, the combined science people testing for stuff, so testing for ions. So your flame tests and your test for negative ions, um, they could give you a mystery white powder and ask you to work out what it is, or this could be in the format of a logic puzzle, something like that. So good luck guys, please don't forget that I am going to be here with you, um, I'm waiting to answer your questions if there's anything I can do for you, good luck. Ouch, mm, I'll be too